Mr. Walker, members of the faculty, Mr. McMillan, Deacon Schnell, parents, friends, benefactors, and guests, on behalf of the class of 2009, I thank you all for coming today and being a part of this ceremony that means so much to many of us. I personally would also like to thank Ann Walway, my fellow graduate award winner. This speech is as much hers as it is mine. I'd like to take a few moments to pause here and remember Drea Evans, a member of our class who passed away last summer in a tragic accident. Drea was a huge presence in her class and managed to affect us all in some way. The girls touched stories about her sharing her flaming Cheetos at Humane Break and always cracking jokes. Drea was a joyful person, always trying to bring others into joy with her. She wouldn't let anyone be exclusive. She really tried to be friends with everyone. I know that all of us here miss her and wish she could share in the success we celebrate today. Some of you may be thinking when I talk about success that I am merely talking about making it through high school, but in my mind that would be a shallow success as a class. I think our class has achieved a success that is much deeper than just a bunch of diplomas. The Trinity class of 2009 is a special class. I say this not because we have excelled academically or because individuals among us have won awards or contests. No, I say this because we share a certain bond of unity. This ever-growing unity has been a key factor in defining us as a class and also in our development as people. This bond has shaped us into a community of learners within the larger community of Trinity. There are a few ways in which we have developed our unity as a class into this community of learners. The, uh, I propose that these ways are the joy we experience with each other, the leadership of our class, and our humility as a class. The learning environment that this class has created is not only one of cultivation of ideas and curiosity, but also an environment of joy. The sheer joy of coming to school and discovering, not only for the sake of discovering, but also for the sake of being with and interacting with each other, has made us a community of learners. An example of this joy came for me, and I'm sure for many of us here, in discussion. As you know, discussion is a large part of the curriculum here at Trinity. I remember countless discussions we've had as a class, from seventh grade all the way through senior year. There is a part of me, and I'm sure each and every one of us, that thrives in, in this uh, element, environment of discussion. I myself got to the point where I was actually looking forward to coming to school just to discuss some new topic we have read about, for the sake of not only learning, but enjoying that learning with my fellow classmates. The common joy we share in coming to school and learning together brought us together and formed us into a unified community. Our leadership as a class has also shaped us into a community of learners. As a guy, the best example for me this year was probably Toby Turnman. For those of you who don't know, Toby stands for Trinity Outdoor Basketball Extravaganza, which is the boys' spring intramural basketball tournament. Now our grade is not a grade full of great athletes, but this year for Toby Turnman, 100% of the guys in our class signed up and showed up. By doing this, we encouraged other classes to participate just as much as ours did. The girls showed similar leadership with their senior study buddy system and their decorating of the girls' bathrooms for Christmas. <laughs> Throwing ourselves in these seemingly trivial activities as a whole is symbolic of our class's willingness to lead others in establishing this community. These examples of leadership in themselves are key to establishing bonds, not only between the different classes of Trinity, but also between us as members of the class of 2009. And so by our leadership, we have really shown the younger way of grades just how committed we are, not only to them, but also to each other. Through this commitment to each other and our leadership, we have come together as a class. The final element of our community is our humility. I would say it's the primary tie that binds us here together. Some of you may be asking yourselves, what does humility have to do with it? In my opinion, it is the most necessary element in the classroom and also in establishing this community. There are two key ways I see this humility expressed. First of all, all of us have had to express some humility towards the office we read. But there's no way to truly understand what someone else has to say on any subject unless we can all step outside our own shoes and step into theirs. Such an act takes great humility because we sacrifice our own views for a time in order to understand more. In doing this, I'm going to say as an aside, we follow the leader of our faculty. The job they do certainly takes a deep knowledge and sense of wonder, but I also see them having tremendous humility. In daily discussion and life at Trinity, we find ourselves talking with teachers in and out of class on a variety of subjects. After all these talks, 
the faculty members almost start to feel like peers to us as much as teachers. Day in and day out, they care for us and work to listen to, what, um, to, listen to and understand everything we have to say. The second way I see humility expressed in our class is towards each other. We all come from different backgrounds, from varying religious affiliations. As a class, though, we have not let these differences get in the way of establishing relationships with each other and working together to establish the vision that is Trinity. I feel comfortable talking with anyone in this class and knowing that they'll respect me just as much as I respect them. Our humility has allowed us to put aside our differences and acknowledge that our classmates are just as deserving of our love and respect as anyone else. So in our joy, humility, and leadership, we have become a community of learners. As a result of establishing this community within our class, we have experienced true success. This is not achieved success, like winning a contest or beating the high score on the latest Facebook game. No, this success is a deep and defining one. I call the success defining because in a sense we have become an ideal to which any Trinity class should strive. I call the success deep because it means more to each and every one of us than just a win on our record. This deep, defining success has caused a realization of our equality as human beings within our class. On the outside, we all seem different and, in a sense, unequal. Some of us are smarter, some are more athletic, and some work harder than others. But this is our shallow view of, a tr of our true equality as human beings. Our true equality lies in the basic spiritual dignity that is instilled in us by our Creator. If we look past these differences, we really see that we are all just human beings working to experience the same happiness, the same good as everyone else. If we apply that to us here, each and every one of us has a good and fulfilling purpose in establishing a community dedicated not only to learning, but also to God. This whole idea parallels a scene from Second Chronicles. The trumpeters, singers, the trumpeters and singers joined in unison, as with one voice, to give praise and thanks to the Lord. Accompanied by trumpets, cymbals, and other instruments, they raised their voices and praised the Lord and sang, He is good, His love endures forever. Anyone can see when looking at our class that we have all realized this true human equality and live in it day in and day out through our unity and love for one another as a class. Therefore, our true success as a class lies in our recognition of this basic human equality in each other, which is one of man's most basic acts of love. So now that we are going our separate ways, and this community seems to be breaking apart, we may ask ourselves why would we even care to talk about this community anymore? As a reflection, I think of the Brothers Karamazza, the book that has shaped me the most as a person throughout my whole tenure here at Trinity, poses an answer to this. In the last scene of the book, Alexei Karamazza, the champion of goodness and love within the story, addresses a group of young boys at a funeral for one of their peers. He says, you must know that there is nothing higher, or stronger, or sounder, or more useful afterwards in life than some good memory. We should all here take these words to heart and remember these, this moment and all the moments of fellowship we have shared together these past six years. We must always remember the success we have experienced as a class through our unity and communion with each other. For through our remembrance of our time here as a community, we will maintain these same virtues that define us as a class for the rest of our lives. A sheer joy for learning and the community we establish with those around us. A leadership and example for those around us. And a humility towards everyone and everything and all that we do. We've only laid the foundation for the rest of our lives here at Trinity. But this foundation is a strong one, built on attributes that will shape and transform the world around us into something better when we continue to exercise them. Our class is a truly special class, and I am sure that we will carry the memories of our time here together always. God bless and keep you in whatever you do, class of 2009.